<clears throat> okay, so Emmy, we recently, Emmy, we just had a session on uh, finding limits and mm -hmm. how to evaluate limits in different methods. And during the session, uh, we found that change of variable is a very good uh, and interesting way of uh, approaching to find the value of limits. And it's kind of tricky also. Now, since you thought that we should actually go over it once again, so here are a few questions which I'm going to take with you and, uh, and work on this change of variable. Now, to begin with, can you just tell me what are the things which you'd like me to highlight when we're discussing uh, how to apply change of variable to find limits? Um, well, you did say that you can just use it for every, like most of the equations. Yes. So that takes one of my questions, because for some of them, like uh, my question was like, how do you know what strategy to use? Some are more obvious than others, um, but some could be a combination of two things right. like factor and rationalize. So yeah, I was just wondering. Okay. About sure. that. Okay. So we'll uh, extensively uh, work on change of variable so that you understand that this is how change of variable can be applied. And uh, well, definitely you could use change of variable for most of the questions involving uh, limits. So let's try to understand how to do it. Let me share with you the screen and then from there we'll take it up. So Amy, in this particular case, uh, we'll take four examples. These four examples can also be done by factoring and other methods. You could adopt rationalization also, since you see square root terms and cube root terms, correct? Mm -hmm. So when you look at these questions, uh, then many things may come to your mind. You may like to simplify them and then approach. That could also be uh, an approach to solve these questions. So we'll take one by one each and every question and see how without thinking much, if we apply change of variable, how do we get the answer? Do you get the idea? Okay. okay. That's the whole thing. So I could actually simplify them, I could factor them, I could rationalize them uh, and get the solution. But mm -hmm. now our focus is how do we use change of variable to answer these questions straight away, right? And yeah. as I was saying, change of variable is an excellent technique of doing perfect. So make a note of these four questions, and then we'll begin with their solution. <clears throat> While you're making a note, also think about question number one. If we want to change the variable, what kind of change we can do? How do we define x and our new variable? Let the new variable be u, OK? okay. So suggest me how we are going to do it, and from there, we're going to take it. Um, so would we make x equal u 8? 8. Is that how you do it or no? Why? Why u 8? Tell me. So um, half and a quarter, yes. I just found the lowest common denominator. Will be 4, not 8. Will be 4. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. So <laughs> u 4, that is correct. Yeah. In question number 2, in question number uh, two, we have cube root of x plus 7, which is kind of very critical. So how will you do the substitution in this particular case? So I'd make uh, cube root x plus 7 equal u. Perfect. And how will you find the value of x? So I would, so that equals u, then root x plus 7 equals u cubed. So x would equal u cubed minus 7. Yes. So not root, but just x plus 7 will be u cubed, and x will be u cubed minus 7. That's perfectly mm -hmm. fine. You substitute x equals to 1, and you'll know if x approaches 1, what will u approach? Perfect. Question number 3. What kind of substitution will you do in this particular case? So would you make x equal u to the 6? Correct, because here we have half and 1 over 3. And their lowest common denominator is 6. So you just yeah, multiply yeah. and then do it. Well, in the first case, if you use u to the power of 8, it may work, but unnecessarily. Yeah. We could have worked with 3. 
Now, question number four is very similar to question number two, except for uh, the, the radical part is in the numerator this time. Perfect. Mm. Now, in all of these questions, first step will be substitute one and check. Do we have zero over zero? That is very critical. Sometimes in the test paper, especially the very first question, substitution may just work. Yeah. In these cases, when I put one, one minus one is zero, one minus one is zero. I'm sure that this is indeterminate, right? So now mm -hmm. we'll, let's begin with the solution. So I'll actually share with you the solution also. And <clears throat> you need to explain me how am I doing uh, this particular solution, right? So we'll begin with question number one, where the question is, you can read the question and see the substitution and explain how do we arrive at the result that the limit is minus one. Right, so evaluate uh, as limit uh, x approaches one, x to the function is x to the half uh, minus x to the power of quarter divided by one minus x to the quarter. Yeah. So what we just found out was um, when you make x, you make it equal u to the four because four is the lowest common denominator. Um, okay. Then it says, so root x equals u squared. Yeah, so this was uh, my, so this was the thing that we went over in the previous lesson. So x to the quarter equals u. So that means x to the half is u squared. Yes. Which is root x equals u squared. Oh, and then you found, um, yeah, so the cube, I don't, and it's not a cube root, it's like root to the four equals yes. u. Yes. So if we know x approaches one, then you just sub that in into the u one, and we, found, we find out that u approaches one as well. That is correct. So you can transform your equation, which was in terms of x, into a, a new variable, and that is why we call it change in variable, and you get a much simpler expression to work with. Do you see that? Yeah. So the limit u squared minus u divided by 1 minus u, where u approaches 1. It is a much simpler question now to solve than what we began with. Do you see that part now? Yeah. And now easy factoring and cancelling these common terms leaves the answer. Why do we have minus u here? u minus 1 is being divided by 1 minus u, you see? And therefore it is minus 1. All right, yeah. u minus 1 is, this is minus u minus 1. Perfect. And once you get this, you can substitute u equals to 1 and get your answer, which is minus 1. Wait, if you clear? Yeah. So with the minus 1, did you just take out the minus... Or can you just take out the minus one from the denominator? Perfect. That is what you're okay. going to do to cancel this common factor. Is okay. it correct? Perfect. Now let's look into the second question and its solution. So, Emmy, go through the question and explain me the solution. Okay. So evaluate as limit uh, x approaches one, uh, the function x minus one over cube root x plus seven minus two. So we um, made cube root x plus 7 equal to u. Yes. So then we found, uh, so x plus 7 equals u cubed. And then to find x, you just move the 7. So x equals u cubed mi minus 7. Correct. Um, yeah. And then, so we know that x approaches 1. So to find out what u approaches, you just sub the 1 back into the cube root 1 plus 7 and you get a cube root of 8, which is 2. So now we know that u approaches 2. Correct. And then, so, yeah. yeah, you just sub it in. You can explain. <laughs> so you sub yeah. it in and get the formula, the equation, as limit u cube minus 7 minus 1 divided by u minus 1 limit u approaches 2. Now it is much simpler question, right? Minus 7 and minus 1 combine to give you minus 8, and you have your cubic term in the numerator, which can be factored as u minus 2 times u square plus 2u plus 4. 4 is 2 square, right? That's the formula. Mm -hmm. u minus 2 and u minus 2 will cancel. So you're left with this particular term, which is u square plus 2u plus 4. Substitute u equals to 2 to get your answer, which is 12. 
Perfect. So it's helpful to know how to factor out the u cube minus a. Yes, cube is much difference, easier. difference of cubes. So you should note down the formula of difference of cube. A cube minus B cube equals to A minus B was in brackets times write down within brackets A square plus A B plus B square. Okay. And see how it works at this particular stage where we have factored. Do you see that? Yeah. A minus two, U square plus two times U plus two square, which is four. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Everything clear? Yeah. So let's move on to question number three, which is very similar to question number one. Now, quickly, can you explain me this particular solution? Yeah. So um, evaluate as limit x approaches one, um, root x minus one over cube root x minus one. Mm -hmm. So what we did was... Um, so root x can be written as x to the half and cube root x can be written as x to the third. So we found the lowest common denominator, which was six. So that's why we got x equals u to the six. Perfect. Perfect. Then um, we did, so, so this is where we do the whole thing again, where x to the six, um, to the one over six equals uh, u. So then from that you can find uh, uh, root x equals u cubed and the cube root of that equals u squared. Perfect. Then you have to sub, so we know x approaches 1, so now we need to find what u approaches, so you just sub the 1 back into the equation of cube root um, x and you get u approaching 1. Good. So you understood this process, correct? So this step, is it clear to you? Square root of x is equal to u cubed. Is that step clear to you? Right? Could you just go ahead and go through it one yeah. more time? Yeah. So do one thing. Square root of x is x to the power of half, correct? Yeah. Instead of x, write down u to the power of six. So it becomes u to the power of six divided by two. Oh. Divided by two is three. So you get u cubed. Oh my god, that actually makes so much more sense. So work the yeah. other way. Work the other way. Because oh, I found out what x is. So why don't I just sub in? Yes. So oh. x cube root. x to the power of 1 over 3. Instead of x, write u to the power of 6. 6 divided by 3 is 2. We get x u squared. Oh. The other way. So this okay. is the technique of looking at it. So if you look at it from the other side, it becomes very, very simple. Yeah, I was just and looking at it from one was, side. Yeah, I could see that. And I could realize that that is a problem. And that is generally the problem with most of the students. They kind of go over it, but in the test paper, they're not able to provide the solution, mainly oh. because they miss this particular step. And this understanding is very, very critical. Perfect. Mm. So that is yeah. why I actually took question number one, which was very similar. And then again, question number three, only to ensure that this technique is properly understood by you. Perfect. Yeah. Now quickly go through the solution and tell me, if you're going to do it after the substitution, how are you going to work on it? So um, we found out that root x equals u cubed. So where you see root x, you just sub back in u cubed minus one. And we found out the cube root of x equals u squared. So you just sub that in u squared minus one. Perfect. Now we can factor it out. So we just learned that um, u cubed minus one, when you, the, is it difference of cubes? Yes. Yeah. Um, so if you have x cubed minus one, you get uh, x minus one bracket and then x squared plus x plus one. Got it. So that's the formula. So then yeah. you just sub u into it and then u squared minus one, the difference of squares, we know that. So x minus, sorry, u minus one and then u plus one. We find two common factors so we can cancel them out. Yes. And you're left with u squared plus u plus one over u plus one. Then you simply um, just sub in uh, u approaching one and you get three over two. Yes. Okay. So that is perfect. So the common factor was u minus one, which gave you zero over zero form. Once you've canceled that common factor, you can now substitute u equals to one and get your answer. That is it. The last question on this exercise is 
cube root of x plus 64 minus 4 over x. You need to find the limit of this particular function when x approaches 0. Tell me, how will you approach this and solve this question? So you just let uh, u be the cube root of x plus 64. First step, Emmy, should be this. Oh, substitute the, the value 0. When you substitute 0 here, you get cube root of 64, which is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. Substituting 0 in the denominator gives you 0. So you get a form which is 0 over 0. It is indeterminate form, and therefore, we are going to apply some of our techniques. Mm. This technique is called change of variables. Sometimes we also say substitution of a different variable, but change of variable is the correct name. Uh, substitution we have used as the very first technique, or we do it at the end. Perfect. Yeah. So now explain once you have figured out that it is of the form of 0 over 0, then what happens? Okay, so after you find out that it's in indeterminate form, um, then you have to. So we, we said we're doing it by change of variable. Yes. So you let u be cube root um, of x plus 64. So x would equal u cubed minus 64. Yes. As x approaches 0, so you just sub the 0 back into the uh, cube root x plus 64, and we get u approaching 4. Got it. Then um, we've said that uh, cube root x plus 64 is um, u. So then you just sub that in, getting u minus 4. Yes. And we said x was u cubed minus 64. So you just sub that also back in. And like we talked before, we do factorize now. So the denominator, um, we're using the difference of cubes formula. And you get u minus 4 over u squared plus 4u plus 4 squared. Um, and then we see two common factors. So the u minus 4 and the u minus 4, they cancel, making 0. Yes. So we get 1 over, don't forget the 1, yes. 1 over u squared plus 4u plus 4 squared. Then you just sub in the u approaching 4 and you get 1 over 48. Perfect, perfect. So do you see the power of change of variable while doing these yeah. questions? Right? It's so helpful. <laughs> I love so, it. Uh, Amy, again, we're back to the first screen where we have all the four questions. Yeah. My request to you is that all these questions can be done by rationalization, right? Mm. They can be done by rationalization. So your homework for today is solve these questions using rationalization and okay. then compare your solution to what we just did so okay. that you could really appreciate how powerful this change of variable technique is. You get my yeah. point? So do rationalization and see how it works out, you will run through the whole page to solve this particular question using rationalization. And with substitution, you could do it in half of the page, right? And it's so clear once you understand the concepts. So are now, you saying that change yeah. of variable method is much faster and quicker? Much faster, yeah, much faster and quicker. So even what? if you can do it by other strategies like rationalization factoring, you're saying it's best to... Yeah, it cannot match factoring because sometimes it's like killing a bird with a cannon do you understand it is a powerful tool right <laughs> <What>? <laughs> suppose if it is a simple uh, factoring question i will not be oh, changing the okay. you know because ultimately you come to a factoring stage you had u cube minus a cube right you oh, yeah. so ultimately you apply factoring but if you're already <laughs> there then <laughs> don't do yeah so you might as well just use it <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> Change of variable, right? So makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense, right? Now, we learned this technique today, but this technique will be used extensively in calculus, especially okay. when we move on to integral part of the calculus. And even otherwise, most of the time, when you work with application questions, there, and even as when we say function of a function, basically we are defining a function in terms of new variables. That is change of variable. The same technique you're going to apply in so many other places, and therefore it is worthwhile to understand it now. Mm. That's the reason why we took this session and I made you work go through these solutions so that you get all these things sink in, right? So that's kind of a very important thing to as a learning process to do, so that you really grasp the whole concept and apply it whenever required. Yeah.
So what are your views about today's lecture, Emmy? I'm just so happy that you've <laughs> changed that part. You know, the where you get the X and forming the X and like that. Yeah. Because I was doing it just the one way. Like, if you go the other way, it's so much easier. My brain is not functioning. I was like, I can't do this. How are you getting the answers? Yeah. I'm so happy I got that part click. Because without that, then you can't really do the rest of it. So right. I need to get that part, like, <laughs> you know, checked. Very. Yeah. I'll, yeah, share really with you. Yeah, I'll share with you some more videos. Now, in my videos, you have a question right in the beginning. Pause the video, answer the particular question, then see the solution. So at least do about 15, 20 questions on just limits and working strategies with limits. Also focus on limits when they're approaching infinitely large values. Okay. And those will be good for you to do, right? So we'll be back again with exam review now on this topic. You know fairly well the topic of limits. So get ready for tomorrow's session on exam review on limits. Okay. All right, cool. Thank Great. you so much, sir. Thanks. My pleasure. Thanks. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. You too. Thanks.